past year, the hardest year of my life, fighting to end the ongoing genocide in Tigray. And I don't know that what I would even consider what I've been doing as activism. It feels more like a literal fight for survival. I can't even say I'm fighting for me and my family because at this point, I don't even know if any of my family is alive due to the entire region being cut off from the world. But I know inside what the right thing to do is, and that's to focus on the facts and keep fighting. Even if my efforts don't save my mother, it could save someone else's. And I say this is the hardest year of my life <clears throat> because I have never been tested the way that I have. On top of losing family and friends to the genocide, the harassment, threats, and assaults is beyond belief. And I've gotten my fair share of threats and harassments for my advocacy work in the United States, including being spit at, called the N-word, made memes out of, but the group of people supporting the genocide is something I was not ready for. Not only have I been physically assaulted by an entire mob, I have been told by people who I knew since my time in Ethiopia that my family and I all deserve to die. People have DM'd many of us videos of dead, burnt Tigrayan bodies saying it's barbecue time. Memes making fun of the hungry children knowing my younger siblings are there and starving. Threats to rape me. Plastering my face on posters claiming I'm a terrorist. Asking around for my address. Mind you, other activists in the U.S. have been run over, had their businesses burned, had guns drawn on them, and other forms of assault only for speaking up against the genocide. And although I wish none of this had to happen, I can appreciate the lesson and skill it taught me, which is focus. It taught me that in any good, righteous work you do, there will be people set to distract you, to take you off track, to get you out of character. But the important thing is to always stay grounded and true to yourself. Let people's actions and words speak for themselves and your actions for yours. And also to not give others the power to control you. If something someone says to you takes you out of character, then you have allowed them to have that much power over you. So be mindful. And I recently just got back from Sudan where I was able to see, interact, and help the Tigrayans who fled from the genocide. This trip taught me many things, one of which being that some things can't be taken away from you. Your family, your loved ones, your home, your clothes, your arms, they can all be taken away from you. But there's something within you that no one can take away. The Tigrayans I met had so much taken away from them, but yet they were still full. For them, they were full of resilience. They had activated and watered that inner part of themselves that I was talking about earlier. Rather than revenge or anger, they shifted their energy, focus, and visions on how to rebuild their home, how to heal their people. Some there who have very little are doing all they can to create spaces for the most vulnerable, including spaces for children to dance, sing, learn martial arts, poetry, and drama. I saw people manage to find inner peace in the midst of chaos, in the midst of genocide. And they don't have many physical things, but they all have different pieces of knowledge, different experiences, different skills, and together they made the best out of the situation, out of their environment. But again, each person knew where they were needed, when they were required to lead, and when to follow and listen to others. And I thought, what a wonderful way to build community, where they know they depend on each other, so each person has to work on activating their full potential. And I think that's something we all can and should work on, accessing that inner part of ourselves, the thing that will keep us going and guide us on our darkest days. And it doesn't matter how each of us get there. It could be through religion, faith, meditation, breathing, just as long as we work on finding it. If everyone makes a collective effort to do good, no matter how small, no matter who's watching, then we'll create a community of goodness. So, to those who are being recognized tonight, as a member of your community, I appreciate the good work you've done and look forward to seeing all that you will do in your future endeavors. Thank you.
What if we could help end a genocide? The Nobel Peace Prize for 2019 has been awarded to Ethiopian Prime Minister Abi Ahmed Ali. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, winner of the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize, had launched military operations in Tigray in November last year. On November 4th, 2020, Abiy Ahmed cut off Tigray from the world by shutting down phone, internet, electricity, banks, and basic services. This genocidal war on Tigray is happening in the dark. We have corroborated information of gross human rights violation abuses. Alleged mass killing of several hundred people. We are seeing very credible reports of human rights abuses and atrocities. Abductions and sexual violence against women and girls. This is part of a campaign that's being intentionally waged against the women of Tigray. Sexual violence is used by soldiers as a way to fight this war. Well, it's chaos here. The Ethiopian Red Cross has warned that 80% of the country's conflict-hit Tigray region is completely cut off from humanitarian aid. Give us safe and unhindered access. Respect the medical doctors. Respect the health facilities. Ethiopian troops, along with neighboring Eritrean troops, have killed thousands of civilians, including deliberate weaponized rape of women and girls. Some have called this another Yugoslavia or Rwandan genocide in the making. But today, we hope to change that. Join us in spreading awareness about what's happening in the dark using hashtag Tigray Genocide and hashtag Free Tigray to pressure the international community to restore peace provide relief, and ensure accountability in Tigray. 4.5 million people, or 91% of Tigrayans, are on the brink of starvation. But if we band together, we can fight this man-made humanitarian crisis and help ensure a peaceful and thriving Tigray, united as one for the good of helping others. Free Tigray. Helping to